What's up guys, my name is Crescent, and if you haven't figured it out already, product research is the most important part of the entire process of selling on Amazon. The success of your Amazon business depends solely on the products you pick to sell. And if you choose a poor product, no matter how well you improve it, market it, advertise or throw money at it, it isn't gonna sell well, and there simply won't be any money in it to be made. So in this video, I'm gonna go over step-by-step step everything that you need to know to set yourself up for success to find your first product. Now, this is gonna be a very thorough and comprehensive video, so you may wanna take some notes or bookmark this so you can come back to it later. You'll also find timestamps in the video description so you can jump to specific topics in this video if you need to review certain parts of it in the future. All right, so product research consists of three core components, product discovery, product analysis, and product tracking. And that's what you'll typically learn on your own. However, there's actually a fourth and extremely important component that no one else talks about, and in my opinion, is a vital part in the success of your product research, and will make the process a lot quicker and easier for you. And that fourth component is planning. Now, you wouldn't go on vacation without a plan, so I don't understand how people can start a business without one. Every successful business starts by having a business plan. A business plan gives you direction and clearly defines what your goals are and what you need to do in order to achieve those goals. So when it comes to product research, you need to define what your goal is and what you need to do in order to achieve that goal. So in the case of doing product research, the goal is how much profit you realistically want to make each month and you need to clearly define what's necessary to achieve that goal. So for example, if your goal is to make $3,000 profit per month, then it boils down to answering one question. How many items do you need to sell every month? Well, to figure that out, you need to know how much the profit margin is for each item that you sell. Because if we know that, then simply dividing that number by $3,000 we'll know how many items we need to sell, right? Okay, so since we don't know what we're gonna sell yet, we need to make an assumption. What I recommend is aiming for a minimum profit margin of $5, but ideally 10. The key here is that the profit margin needs to be high enough so that A, it's worth your time to even pursue selling this item in the first place. Why do all this work to make pennies on each sale? And B, to absorb any additional costs like advertising or changes and fluctuations in the market. If your profit margin is only $1, then how can you afford to advertise? Or if your manufacturing or shipping costs go up, you'll suddenly be in the red. A lot of people prefer to use percentages when they talk about profit margin and will tell you that you should aim for something like 30 to 50% profit margin. Well, you need to be careful because percentages are relative. If you have a 50% profit margin on a $1 product, that may sound great, but in reality, you're only making 50 cents. So in order to make $3,000 per month, you'd have to sell 6,000 units. That's 200 units a day. What's more realistic is selling five or 10 units a day, where if you have a $10 profit margin, then selling 10 items a day will hit your $3,000 profit per month. Make sense? Now, once you've figured out all of these numbers to suit your own goals, they'll come in handy again later and you'll see why it's important to have a plan first. All right, and the next step is smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It would really help me out a lot and I'd appreciate it. But really, the next step is product discovery. This is where you need to analyze the product ideas to see if they meet all of the criteria for being a viable product to sell, such as if it has high demand with low competition, and meets your profit goals. But the problem is, you just sitting around all day trying to come up with different product ideas to analyze isn't gonna get you very far. How many ideas can you realistically come up with on your own? Well, back in the day, you really did have to scour Amazon or the internet and try to find product ideas on your own. But nowadays, there are powerful tools available that make doing product discovery and analysis much, much faster and easier. So. The product research tool that I use and recommend is called Jungle Scout. The two primary tools you'll be using are the product database, which is what we'll be using for product discovery, 
and the Chrome extension to do product analysis. The product database is a powerful tool because it allows you to find items in Amazon's marketplace that match specific search criteria that you set. And the Chrome extension allows you to quickly and easily analyze niches by providing all of the data in a convenient window for you to analyze, which we'll go over in the product analysis step. Jungle Scout has a few options for you to choose from. And what I suggest getting to start is the Suite plan. It comes with all the features that you'll need. You can see here that you can actually save some money if you pay annually, but what you can do is pay monthly and when you're done with product research, cancel your subscription and rejoin when you're looking for your next product. Now you can actually do the same thing by paying annually to save a little bit more money and when you do cancel, you'll get a prorated refund. Now I actually worked together with Jungle Scout and managed to get a deeply discounted promotional bundle for you so you can save even more money. And I'll leave a link to this discount in the video description below if you decide to purchase it. All right, so the product database is a great place to start looking for viable products, especially for beginners, because like I said earlier, the hardest part of doing product research is actually the product discovery phase. It's impossible for anyone to just sit around and dream up enough different product ideas to research. So with the product database, you can find thousands of different product opportunities simply by changing different search parameters. So if you're planning to sell in the US marketplace, choose US. Then pick the categories you want to find products to sell in. You can select all of them. However, I personally only choose specific categories like the ones you see here. I specifically avoid these categories because like clothing, shoes, and textiles, there's way too many variations and people always change their minds after buying them and return them. So it's not something I wanna deal with. Electronics break all the time and can be hard to use. It's also difficult to improve on or differentiate. So the manufacturing process is complicated and expensive. I also avoid anything that you can eat ingest or put in or on your body like lotions and creams because I just don't want to have the liability if someone was to get injured or hurt. And the toys and games category has too many restrictions. It's way too competitive and the life cycle of the products is often very short. Okay, I suggest sticking with standard size products. This keeps your shipping and Amazon fees low. Oversized can be a logistical nightmare with high storage, shipping and Amazon fees to the point where it may not even be cost effective to do FBA and leave all the seller types checked. Now, this section here is where you can fine tune the filters to find specific micro niches of products. The key here is understanding what each one of these filters does so that you can use them effectively and not use the same filters that everyone else is using. That way you can find products that other people aren't seeing. The first filter here is the price. This is where we can set the minimum and maximum price of the products that are selling in the Amazon marketplace. This is the net profit filter. This is how much profit there is minus the FBA fees. So you can search for products that have a specific profit margin. In my opinion, this should really be called the gross profit filter because Jungle Scout doesn't know what your product costs are. This is the BSR or best seller rank filter. Depending on how well a listing is selling, it is given a score called the bestseller rank, which is based on how well it is selling compared to other listings in the same category. The lower the score, the better. The sales filter is how many units are sold every month. And as you might have already guessed, your planning will come in handy using this filter. Revenue is how much total money is made in sales without subtracting anything such as fees or costs. Reviews is how many people have left a review for the product. This is how we determine how competitive a product or niche is. Rating is the feedback score the listing has or how many stars it has. So that's a number between zero through five stars. Weight should be pretty obvious. That's how much the item weighs. Sellers is how many listings are selling the exact same product. LQS is the listing quality score. This is a score that Jungle Scout has given to each listing based on how optimized the listing is. The score is out of 100. Poor quality listings have lower scores. Date first available is when did the listing start selling in the Amazon marketplace? We can use this filter to tell how competitive or saturated a niche is becoming. And we'll go into that later. You can include or exclude specific keywords here. And I suggest excluding 
top brands and unavailable products. When you're doing private label, you're not reselling other people's products, you're manufacturing your own. Okay, so now that you know what each one of these filters does, here's what I suggest for a starting point. For the price, I suggest a starting range between $15 and $50. The reason is because anything less than $15, if you subtract your manufacturing costs and Amazon fees, there won't be any money left for profit. Amazon fees are gonna be at least $6 or so. So if we use the rule of thirds here, typically one third of the sale price will go to manufacturing, one third to fees, and the last third is your profit. So at $15, you can expect a third of that will be your profit at $5. I don't suggest going higher than $50 because products beyond that price point, buyers will typically put more thought and research into it since it's no longer an impulse buy. Now, in the current climate with e-commerce and Amazon, I suggest actually setting the price range between $30 and $50. This will help you avoid a lot of competition because most beginners or people with smaller budgets are looking in the lower price range. Higher price products also generally have higher profit margins too. And with the current storage unit limitations for new products, you don't need much more starting capital to get into the higher price products. I have a video that goes into this, which I'll post a link to in the video description if you wanna learn more about this. Now, set the maximum reviews between 75 to 125. Reviews is how we determine how competitive a niche is. You wanna find niches that have low competition. These are niches where most of the products have few reviews. Niches where most of the products have a lot of reviews will be much more difficult and expensive to gain any traction and break into. Set the minimum monthly sales to 300. That's a good starting point if you're looking for products with a $10 profit margin based on your planning and target sales and profit goals that we went over earlier. Okay, so set the maximum weight to two pounds so the product isn't considered oversized. Otherwise, the fees will be much higher. You'll also notice that I'm using the excluded keywords field here. These keywords are to filter out products that I don't want to sell, like clothing, major brands, food and supplements. Like you can see men's, women's, Nike, Under Armour, shirts, pants, creams, NBA, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'll post a list of these keywords in the description if you wanna use them as well. Now, keep in mind that none of these search criteria are set in stone. These are just my recommendations as a starting point. You can play around with them to find different products. For example, you can set a maximum review rating to like 3.5, so you can specifically look for products that are selling well despite the fact that they have poor reviews. Or you can set the LQS to a maximum of 75 and look for products that have poor listings. Or you can combine them, so listings that have a minimum of four stars and a maximum of 75 LQS, so you're finding products that have great reviews, however, also have poor listings. There's no right or wrong way of doing product discovery, so play around with the filters and see what you can discover. One pro tip here is I like to not use whole numbers in the price and revenue fields. Most people will put $30 or $50, but I'll use something like 29.83 or 50, 67 or whatever, so I can find those outliers that are right at the border of those price points. Remember, you have to think outside of the box. Now, when we click search, Jungle Scout will pull up all of the products that match our search criteria. You might notice that Jungle Scout pulled up a ton of matching listings and it may be overwhelming, so you can always tighten up the search filters to reduce the number of search results. I find that somewhere around 2,000 to 6,000 results is manageable. Anything more than that can be overwhelming to do all at once, so split it up if you have to. A couple of pro tips here is I actually like to change this displaying from 25 to 100 so that I'm not having to navigate through so many pages. And I also like to work backwards through the results as everyone always starts on page one. Again, thinking outside of the box to try to find products that other people aren't seeing. Now, what I do is I browse through these listings looking for ones that catch my eye products that I don't immediately recognize or are strange and out of the ordinary are the best ones to look for. Products that you are familiar with are almost always too competitive, so don't waste your time looking at them. So when you find a product that catches your eye, like this vinyl 
record holder, I'll figure out what I believe the main keyword is and do a search on Amazon for this product. In this case, based on the title, I believe the main keyword is vinyl record holder. If you're not sure or you want to verify what the keyword is, you can use the Keyword Scout tool. Type in what you think the main keyword is and see if that has the highest search volume. You can also try different keyword phrases and compare. Or grab the ASIN of the top competitors and you can do a reverse ASIN search. This will tell you what the main keywords are that the listing is ranking for and will help you to see what the main keyword phrase is. Now you'll notice that vinyl record holder only has 5,600 searches, whereas vinyl record storage has 28,000. And so if we head over onto Amazon and do a search for vinyl record storage in, in all departments, we wanna make sure that most of the listings that show up is that holder stand. But if we take a look here, it looks like most of the products here are crates and shelves. So it's not really these types of stands that we're after. So vinyl record storage may not be the correct keyword to use. Once you know what the keyword phrase is, Head over to Amazon, make sure to choose all departments and do a search for vinyl record holder. Double check you've chose the right keyword by making sure that the majority of the listings that come up are indeed the same product you're looking at. Otherwise, you're doing a search using the wrong keyword. A pro tip here is be careful because if you use the wrong keyword phrase that is too long tail, meaning it's too specific, You'll still see similar products in the search, but you're actually looking at a smaller subset of all the listings you'd actually be competing against. I have a separate video that goes into detail on this, which I'll post a link to in the video description below. This is a very important step that you wanna get right, otherwise you're analyzing the wrong data. In this case, it looks right, so we can pull up the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. First, you can see that the Chrome extension has pulled up all of the details for the top listings in the search results. It's important at this point that you do not sort these listings and rearrange them. You wanna analyze the niches with the listings in the organic order. This is because the top listings are the listings you'll be competing against. So don't sort the listings by sales or revenue or reviews or whatever I see a lot of people doing. You also wanna ignore the sponsored listings. These are the listings placed here based on the PPC advertising system. You can see these listings with the SP logo next to them. You can actually turn these off in the settings so they don't show at all by clicking on menu and turning off sponsored products. Now, by analyzing the data, such as the price, sales volume, revenue, and reviews, you can determine if this niche meets the criteria you set out in your plan and you're able to hit your profit and sales goals. So the first thing I like to look at is if the niche is too competitive. Scan down the top 12 listings and see if the majority of the listings have less than 125 reviews. That means out of the top 12 listings, you wanna see that at least eight to 10 listings have less than 125. Actually count them. Don't rely on the summary averages at the top. These averages don't tell you the whole story. A few listings that have a lot or very few reviews will throw off the entire average. For example, if eight out of the 10 listings have 150 reviews, the average is 120, which is less than 125, but the majority actually have more than 125. You also wanna use the opportunity score here as a reference. Never base any decisions on it. Now, remember, for it to be a viable product idea, it needs to pass all of the criteria. So if it fails at any point, just skip this product and move on to the next one and don't waste any more time. Now, if it does pass for low competition, check if it meets your sales and profit goals. Do most of the listings have 300 or more sales per month? Again, count them. Don't use the average at the top. If it passes, then is the revenue high enough so you can make $3,000 profit per month? Again, apply the one-third rule here. If your target is $3,000 profit per month, then the revenue needs to be around $7,000 or $7,500 or higher. You also want to look at the price. You want to make sure that the majority of the listings have a price point of at least $15 or higher. Because remember, if the price is less than $15, there's not much money to be made. You can dive a bit deeper at this point if all the tests pass so far by checking what the actual profit margin would be. 
One way to do this is by using the FBA calculator. Grab the ASIN of one of the competitors. You can find the ASIN in the URL. It always starts with B0. Copy and paste it here, and you can see that it pulls up all of the product details for you as far as the size and weight in order to calculate the proper fees. Now you can enter the sale price, how much it costs to manufacture and to ship to Amazon, and it will tell you how much profit you're making. Now a good way to get a rough estimate of what the price would be for the product is to go to a website called alibaba.com and do a search for the main keyword and then look for products that are similar to get a rough estimate of the price. So you can see here, this one is $5.20, five to $12, five to $10, five to 5.50, a dollar thirty to a dollar ninety, a dollar to five dollars. Now, an important metric that people aren't considering is the available from value. This is how long the listing has been available on Amazon. You want to avoid niches where there's a lot of new listings. This is how we tell if a niche is saturated. If you see a lot of new listings, then that means a lot of people have recently discovered this niche and launched their products and there's probably more to come. You also need to keep in mind that you can't trust the data you see from new listings. They're most likely doing deep discounts, coupons, promotions, and rebates in order to generate sales, so the sales and revenue numbers you see don't mean anything since they're not organic sales. So out of the top 12 listings, make sure that you don't see more than four or five new listings. I consider listings new if they are less than three months old. You also wanna make sure that the niche isn't brand dominated, meaning that there's no brands that have more than three or four listings in the top 10, and that there isn't any major brands. The reason is because top brands are well established and have brand loyal customers and will just buy from them. They may also be generating sales from direct traffic outside of Amazon, so you won't be able to compete with them. Not to mention, they basically have unlimited advertising budgets. You also want to make sure the niche isn't seasonal, meaning it only sells well during a short period during the year, like pool noodles or Halloween costumes. You want to sell products that sell well all year round. You can check for seasonality by doing a search on Google Trends. Do a search for the main keywords Change the period to five years and make sure the graph is fairly flat all year round. Some niches may have spikes during Christmas if they're giftable items, so that's okay. But just as long as it's not seasonal like a Christmas item, like a Christmas tree ornament. Now, if we take a look at pool noodles for an example, you'll see that it spikes during the summer months. You want to avoid products like this. Now, if you find a product that meets all of these product research criteria, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And then you want to start product tracking it in order to verify the sales velocity. This is an important step because the sales velocity you see here in the Chrome extension is just an estimate. You need to make sure that the daily sales you're seeing is consistent day after day. When you see a listing that has a thousand sales in a month, you don't know if they sold 33 units every day or if they sold a thousand units on the first day and then nothing for the rest of the month. This is where product tracking will help you verify that. You can do this by adding products to a product tracker like Jungle Scout has. And the product tracker will give you the sales history that you can then analyze. If it's a product that Jungle Scout has already been tracking, you'll see the sales history right away. However, if it hasn't, it'll start tracking it and you can check back later to see updates. You wanna track the top 15 to 20 listings for at least seven to 14 days so you can get a good idea of what the daily sales velocity is. You can also use what's called the 999 cart method, which is a very accurate hack to give you exact sales data based on seller's actual inventory. However, it doesn't work well nowadays because most sellers have put cart limits on their listings, but I would still try and see how many listings you can track. Now, if you wanna learn more about the 999 cart method, I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. Okay, now one very important aspect to keep in mind while you're doing product analysis is how you're going to differentiate. You can't sell the exact same thing as the other sellers and expect to do well. You need to have some sort of competitive advantage, otherwise you can only compete based on price and you never wanna do that because competing based solely on price will always end up being a race to the bottom where everyone keeps lowering the price until eventually no one is making any money. Always differentiate and offer a high quality premium product so you have a competitive advantage 
And more importantly, you can charge more. Now, how do you differentiate? Well, there's several ways. One particular method that I like to use is to look in the reviews of the other sellers' listings and see what people are complaining about. See if you can identify a common problem that you can address, such as fixing a problem, adding a feature, or improving it somehow. The easiest, in my opinion, is to differentiate by bundling. This is when you're adding a small bonus item to the product to add value for the buyer, but it also doesn't cost you very much. You can get bundling ideas by looking at the frequently bought together section in the listings or by using your own intuition. A pro tip here is to make sure you're not bundling two main items together. The bundled item should be a small bonus that the buyer is essentially getting for free, but at the same time, it should make sense to pair together. For example, if I'm selling wrapping paper, I could bundle it with a small roll of tape. However, bundling wrapping paper with Christmas tree ornaments wouldn't make much sense. Another way to differentiate is to have a better listing. Sometimes you run across a viable niche where all of the listings are extremely poor or have poor reviews. However, despite having a poor listing and questionable reviews, sales are still really good. In those cases, you can dominate the niche by simply having a better listing with better professional photos and copy. But keep in mind, you should always have a top-notch quality listing anyways, but I've seen niches where all the listings are horrible. Now, I do have a few tips on potential problem areas I want to address. First, I do not recommend differentiating based on something that's subjective. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, something subjective is like color or artistic design. Products like paintings, artwork, decorative products, and coffee mugs with phrases on them. These are all subjective preferences. If someone doesn't like the color you chose, uh, the type of artwork or painting, or the phrase you put on the mug, they're not gonna buy your product regardless of what the price is or the quality of your product or listing. Differentiate based on something objective where it appeals to everyone, like the quality, material, the features and benefits, or bonus items. Second, make sure that the product is small and lightweight. Ideally, you want products to be able to fit inside a shoebox and weigh less than a pound. Otherwise, the shipping and Amazon fees will be much higher. Third, make sure that the product is easy to manufacture. The more complicated it is, like if it has a ton of pieces and moving parts or requires assembly, you can have quality control issues as well as much higher manufacturing costs, especially if the way that you want to differentiate requires retooling or new molds. And fourth, I also suggest staying away from products that are difficult to operate require instructions, can break easily, electronic devices, or anything that can be a liability where someone can get hurt, like food, lotions, creams, or anything that would go in or on your body, or products that people often return, like clothing and toys. It's just not worth the risk or getting bad reviews. And finally, I've left one of the most important product research mistakes to cover last. I've seen far too many people not making sure ahead of time that they're allowed to sell their product on Amazon. Amazon has a list of restricted products that you can't sell without prior approval, such as artwork, automotive products, cosmetics, supplements, electronics, and many toys and games and medical devices, just to name a few. And you can see an entire list here. They also have a list of prohibited products, these are products that you can't sell, period, on Amazon. There's also certain categories that require approval for you to sell in, like some household categories, automotive, and toys and games. You don't want to invest in a product only to find out later that you can't sell it on Amazon, so you always want to check ahead of time to verify if there are any restrictions so you can decide if you want to pursue the product or not. A good way to check if a product has any restrictions is to get the ASIN of a competitor's listing and contact seller support and ask them if there are any restrictions. You can also create your own test product listing for that product. Simply create a dummy listing and enter all of the details for that product and see if any errors come up indicating that there are any restrictions. Keep in mind though that this method isn't a guarantee that if no errors pop up that you're okay to sell it. Sometimes the system doesn't flag the listing right away. You can end up selling for a few days or weeks and then suddenly your listing will get flagged for selling a restricted or prohibited item. So make sure you do your due diligence so you don't end up investing in a product that you can't sell 
on Amazon. The other problem I see people running into is selling a product that is patented or trademarked. This is a serious issue that I see a lot of people not take seriously. Violating someone's intellectual property is a serious offense and you can get sued. You can do a check on USPTO.gov or on Google Patents by doing a search for the main keywords for that product. Then look to see if anything pops up for that product. Keep in mind that just because you didn't find anything doesn't mean that there isn't a patent or trademark on it. It could just be that the owner filed it under a different name or keyword that you weren't searching for. If you're not sure, hire a professional patent attorney to do a search for you. I also often see people complaining that they see other sellers selling the product, but how come they can't? It doesn't matter if other people are selling it. They may have purchased the product legally or got permission from the IP owner to sell it. If you can't prove that you did the same, then your products will be considered counterfeit. So do your due diligence and stay away from patented and trademarked products. For example, a lot of people got caught up selling these snorkel masks and got their listings shut down. If we do a search for snorkel masks, you can see that there's a patent for this exact product. You can see that this patent has already been granted. With that in mind, you also want to avoid products even if the patent is pending. This also holds true with trademarks. You can't sell t-shirts or coffee mugs with Mickey Mouse or Batman logos on them. Those are trademarks. You need permission from the IP owner, in this case Disney or DC Comics, in order to resell or manufacture products with their trademarks on them. Again, just because you see other people selling it doesn't mean you can. They may be selling it legally or they just haven't been caught yet. Another example is people selling these building blocks. You can't use other people's trademarks in your listing. You can manufacture your own building blocks, but you can't call them Legos. Lego is a trademark. You'd have to use the term building blocks in your listing. If you use Legos, it'll get flagged. So you can't capitalize on people searching for the term Lego. Only people that have searched for building blocks. So stay away from patented and trademark products. It's not worth the hassle, especially if you can get sued. All right, and that's it. That's how you do product research properly. I've created a checklist that has all of the necessary steps and criteria that you can follow to help you out and keep you on track. So if you'd like to download it for free, there's a link in the video description below. So if you wanna get in touch with me, you can find all of my contact details in the video description below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment or question in the comment section below. I answer every single one. And as always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And do me a favor, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help me out and I'd appreciate it. And ring the bell so you never miss a future video. All right, thanks for watching.